Games. Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. As I promised in my review of Intel's latest Coffee Lake CPU, the i5-8600K, feel free to check it out in the right top corner, I'll be taking a closer look at the motherboard model which I've used to review it, that being MSI's Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. Although MSI with this new generation of Intel's platform and chipsets decided to continue to use Gaming Pro Carbon series naming, they did choose to do a slight redesign of the motherboard as you can see it here for yourself, probably to keep things fresh after all. The color scheme is more or less the same compared to the Z270 generation, combining black and silver details around the motherboard, like on the chipsets and VRM's cooling, but this time they shifted it a bit more on the silver color as opposed to having everything almost black. We also again have few areas covered in carbon imitation pattern, thus the model name, and in my opinion they've did a better job this time, putting it more seamlessly around for example the back IO cover, where before that we just had a small portion of that top surface covered. Other than that, you can see that MSI transferred some of their feature sets over to this generation, like for example the strengthened and chromed out PCI Express and RAM slots, one M.2 slot equipped with thermal padding, and so on. Speaking of the slots, this model has a total of 3 PCI Express 3.0 X1 slots and 3 PCI Express 3.0 X16 slots with different electrical configurations. Bottom 2 X16 slots are capable of X8 bandwidth transfer, while the first, the main one so to speak, of course has x16 speed. If the first two are used in SLI or Crossfire Multi GPU setup, they will work at x8 x8 speeds, while well, in the case of Triple Way Multi GPU setup, for which this model only supports AMD's Crossfire, the electrical configuration of the slots will work at x8 x8 x4. Basically feature wise in terms of the chipsets Z270 compared to Z370, nothing changed. As for the M.2 slots, there's a total of two of them, one capable of taking in up to 110mm modules and other up to 80mm modules. Both support NVMe drives and high bandwidth, but it can vary depending on other slots and ports used around it, so be sure to check the user manual and address your specific scenario. Also the top module comes in with thermal padding and metal cover, which should in theory keep the temperature down and prevent potential performance throttling of warmer drives. In terms of other storage options, we have 6 SATA 3 ports running off Intel's Z370 chipset, which also brings in a total of 6 USB 2.0 and 6 USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports combined as headers on the motherboard and ports at the back I.O. panel. With the addition of extra S-Media chipset, we have 2 USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, one type A and one type C. Beside them, back here you will also find your standard array of ports like the HDMI and DisplayPort with outputs, analog and digital audio connections and Intel's Gigabit LAN, but most importantly a separate wireless 802.11ac PCI Express X1 module which comes with the bundle and which is why this model has an AC put in its model naming. So no, it's not an air conditioning unit. With that you'll of course get Wi-Fi antennas, for some reason only two SATA cables, IO shield, two-way high bandwidth SLI bridge and a bunch of additional cables for different RGB connection setups and MSI's Mystic Light feature. Speaking of it, of course we have few different spots around the motherboard which have integrated RGB LEDs, but for some reason MSI's Mystic Light software didn't detect my model, it's very likely that that's due to the pre-released BIOS version that I had on it, or the software itself still wasn't updated to support this particular model of the motherboard. Anyway, I wouldn't worry about it too much, this problem is probably already addressed as we speak, but I would worry about what color to choose as we have 16.8 million of them and 17 different LED glowing effects across the motherboard. Moving back to the motherboard, on the right side of the CPU socket you'll find 4 DDR4 slots for up to 64GB of RAM and supporting speeds up to 4000MHz if your CPU's IMC allows it. And surrounding it we have 3 fan headers, 24 pin ATX power connector, 2 USB 3.0 headers, one of which is positioned at a 90 degree angle. The 8 pin EPS power connector is placed at the usual spot in the left top corner, while on the bottom you will find your common array of headers, front panel, audio, USB, as well as a mix mash of 5 and 12 volt RGB LED headers and two more fan headers for a total of 5. 
For audio circuitry MSI put the latest and greatest real takes ALC1220 audio codec combined with MSI's audio boost feature and technologies, MEI shielding and upgraded components like Chemicon Gold capacitors. As for the performance and overclocking potential goes, basically everything you can see in my review of the Core i5-8600K is also reflected here. Before all, I had a really easy job of overclocking it to 5.1 GHz, most of it because of the overclocking potential of the CPU and this model's decent 10-phase power design, but also on the count of the fact that MSI kept their well-familiar UEFI BIOS interface layout, it was just transferred over from the previous generation, so I was pretty much already set and done from the beginning in terms of getting used to it. It's very easy to get around in it, being it in advanced mode and especially in easy mode if you don't need anything more than just loading up your RAM's XMP profile. Back in the advanced mode you'll have access to more refined voltage and frequency settings, everything you need to achieve your stable CPU and RAM overclock, including other more advanced motherboard related settings, check out which hardware is populating the motherboard using this very cool interactive picture, as well as tune your fans to a very specific specific degree. In terms of the numbers, I've ran few standard CPU benchmarks, as you can see them here, both stock and overclocked, but overall there's nothing to comment about in particular, as the motherboard itself is so to speak the middleman in this whole process, and the performance barely differs from model to model and solely depends on the CPU and RAM speeds. All in all, this is a pretty well-rounded model feature-wise, with an added bonus of having a wireless network adapter and with a very distinct but still at least to me attractive look, which will go along great with most of the builds. The only thing you have to weigh in is if it's worth it to you in terms of the price, which is around $200, and features that you plan to really use, especially in the context of being able to overclock your case QCPUs. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product or if you want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line, or you can just check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!